Varsity. Hey, run it up by the morning. Only one still on it. Only one still on it. Only one still really real to feel getting it on. Yeah, yeah. We gotta go. We gotta go. We gotta go. Welcome to the Culture Club Uncensored. I am your host, Osei the Dark Secret. And this is the podcast that amplifies how music influences everything from politics to entertainment to news to education to relationship. We know music plays an incredible role in all of that. Now, our guest today is rapper, singer, songwriter, actor, and influencer Robert LaTruth Hampton, known for making waves across social media from skits that oftentimes push the limits to his music as well. Now, his recent single, Don't Disrespect, features hip-hop legend Snoop Dogg. Ladies and gentlemen, I need you to welcome LaTruth. My brother, what's up? How's it going, man? Man, welcome, welcome. How are you? Doing great, man. Good, good. Yeah. Now, before we jump off into everything, man, how do you get Snoop Dogg on your single? Uh, coming man. out the gate, how did that come about? That was actually set up through my management. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Cody Logan. Okay. He set that up, man. Um, KZ, the artist, another dope artist that's actually on the song. But it was a great experience working with Snoop. Okay, so did y'all actually get in the studio together at the same time, or did he, you know? Now nah, we actually him? recorded it separately, separately. Like, through emails, but we did yeah. definitely chop it up in person and all that too. That's so. what's up. Yeah. Okay. Um, now, as we talk about music, man, and its influence, what's on your podcast or on your playlist? I should say, what were you listening to on the way up here, or how did you get today started? Uh, top back, Ti, man. That's one of um, that song right there gets me in my vibe. Every okay. Time. Okay, that one right there. What's uh, what would you say is the soundtrack to your life? What what song does that for you? Mm, or what probably songs? Probably "Big Mama" by LL Cool J, um, mm. the song where he talks about his his grandmother raising him because I was raised by my grandmother. Okay. Um, Tupac's music as well, "Dear Mama," um, and a lot of R and B. Okay, a lot yeah, of R and B. Boys the Men, Silk, R Kelly, Jagged Edge, people like that. Okay. R&B is definitely uh, it's thumping right now. Now, um, you made your, your name as a social media influencer, right? Let's talk about the music. How old were you when you got into the music? Um, I started making music when I was 15 years old. Okay. Uh, my first rap project I put out, I was in high school. What was the response grade, like? Everybody in school, they loved it. Mm -hmm. you know, they kept saying, you need to keep making music, so I continued it. Okay. Yeah. Um, now, oftentimes, I know you're online a lot of times with your daughters. Do either of them sing or yeah, rap? Yes, most really? definitely. My oldest daughter, she's um, she's 16 now. Okay. But she definitely sings. I've been showing her how to sing since she was three years old, and she does a really good job at it. All right. What do you think the future is as it relates to that um, for her? Do you think something um, that she wants to pursue? I'm, I'm hoping she chooses to pursue it because she's very good, but... She she has other interests, and okay. you know, being a stylist and doing you know doing hair and all types of stuff like that, having her own boutique. So okay, nice. Now I know you've had um, your set of personal challenges, and you recently overcame a battle with stomach cancer, correct? Yes, sir. Yeah, man, that's uh, that's big. Congratulations on bouncing back Appreciate from that. You know, how did you how did you find out? Because I know for a lot of brothers, it's important that we talk about our health and well being. Yeah, it definitely runs in the family. You know, my mother, she died from stomach cancer when I was five years old. And mm -hmm. my sister passed away from it, I'm gonna say five years ago. As soon as she passed, we realized that it was something we needed to take take a look at. You wow. know, so I went and did a gene test, me, my all my siblings, mm -hmm. and every one of us had the CDH1 gene mutation, um, except for one of my siblings, my younger sister. Um, so they ended up getting their stomachs took out. Uh, my wow. oldest, my next to the oldest sister, she was diagnosed with stomach cancer, stage one. Uh, my brother got it, his stomach removed for preventive. And then I found out, uh, I'm gonna say, three years after they got their stomach took out, I found that I had stage one stomach cancer. So, I mean, <laughs> I gotta ask this question. I know it might sound a bit ignorant, but getting your stomach removed, what mm -hmm. comes along with that? And what is that process like? Does it impact your diet now? Um, is this form of cancer, you know, is it is it, triggered by how you eat on a regular basis anyway? Does that make it more aggressive? Take us through that process. It definitely can be. Mm -hmm. um, you know, whenever, if you do have that gene, you know, you want to try to eat as much plants and stuff like that, be vegan and stuff like that, that can help it. Okay. If you eat a lot of meats and drink a lot of alcohol and stuff like that, it can higher the risk of mm -hmm. getting 
stomach cancer. Okay. But it's a pretty high risk either way. Mm. So uh, I'm sure you've made a lot of changes since that time. Uh, what, what type of lifestyle changes are you into now? Um, eat more vegetables, uh, fish, stuff like that. Okay. Drink a lot of water. I still do juice and fruits and vegetables and stuff like that. Because okay. when I first was diagnosed with stomach cancer, I was 250 pounds. Really? Um, yeah, and at 5'11", you know, that's that's obese. Yeah. So within six months, I juiced fruits and vegetables completely. That's it. I didn't eat nothing else. Worked out seven days a week, and I dropped down to 170 pounds on the date that I had to get my stomach completely removed. Mm. Well, well, painful in terms of the recovery? Nah, not for me, man. Really? Like, I actually walked right out of surgery. Like, once I got done with the surgery, I went to the bathroom, got up and walked to the bathroom that night. Okay. Man. What's the first meal after a procedure like that? Um, they had the, they had the um, IVs and stuff like that, so you know we're just kind of like liquid stuff. Mm, okay, um, I've heard you talk <clears throat> about this kind of in my research and understand that you were in a relationship when you went through this, you know, this whole process. Uh, exactly. I know you had a very public breakup from your ex, as many people that follow you know already. Mm -hmm. um, where are you now with that relationship? Um, Divorce is almost final. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Do you all communicate at all? Yeah, we started communicating for our child and stuff like that. Okay. What's the co-parenting? What's that like? It's getting better. Okay. I will say that. It's getting okay. a little better. All right. For, you know, our viewers who aren't familiar or as familiar, yeah. um, what happened? Because it looks very dramatic online. It looks messy mm -hmm. online. Obviously, there's a lot of back and forth. We're not necessarily here to you know take sides more so about the principle anyway but you know i love to hear you speak on it because it seems like there's a lot of twists and turns in that overall relationship uh i guess the best way to explain it um a lot of people are familiar with the amber heard and johnny depp it's really real similar to that okay. you know what i'm saying like having problems throughout the marriage and divorce being the topic so a lot of this stuff the way social media has happened we've seen tyrese and a couple of other people go through it yeah, it's kind of it's kind of like that situation. Mm. Now, um, during the separation, there was a video um, where you were accused, or you accused your ex of being upset. I think she right. might have been packing some things up because you didn't want to adopt her kids. Right? Is that true? Yeah, it's true. Definitely. She, we had a conversation about that. Um, I had talked about getting a divorce, so she brought asked me if I would ever consider adopting her kids, and she brought up situations of other men adopting kids or whatever and like i said the first one i was like all right that's cool that sounds cool sound like a commendable thing to do and then she brought up the second one on the third one i'm just like why you keep bringing up all these different people and how they adopted kids and she asked me would i adopt hers and i said nah i mean we married it makes no sense to adopt kids when we're married i'm already a father to them and i just knew at that moment because i've already been speaking about a divorce she wanted me to do that so for stability so just in case a divorce happens i have to pay for child support on all the kids so mm. did you have any child support issues with your previous child no nah, I've, nah, I've been 100 percent financial with my kids and spent time with them and everything so. i also heard you kind of when you were speaking to her and perhaps this is in the midst of an argument i don't know how accurate or true this is but you know you you accuse her of uh, looking for a come up right is that something that you began to feel as the relationship progressed? Was that something that she said or did that, you know, was light bulb moment or what? Yeah, I started feeling that way, you know, because just me being as, as a Gemini, when we get with women, we, tr we tend to build them up. We want them to be on the same level as us or higher. And that's what I did from the introduction of our relationship all the way to the end. And I realized that she didn't want the same for me. So mm -hmm. it was like, you in this position to to actually help me grow as well and you're not trying to so that's how i started seeing it like that wow um why do you think this you know you because it, it seems like the drama overshadowed a lot of other things right mm -hmm. and it became a real hot button you know what do you think it is because in music you right. know there's a lot of songs that talk about being toxic right as a badge of honor mm -hmm. which i don't understand but that seems to be something that currently a lot of people seem to relate to, but you know, for you, and, and obviously you all recorded everything, yeah. right? You seem yeah. like, you know, for me, that would be difficult, but mm -hmm. 
clearly, you know what I'm saying, you've been able to figure out a path, but why was it such a, a hot button, you know, in terms of that, that aspect of your relationship? I mean, people seem to like negativity over positivity anyway, for some yeah. reason. Um, throughout my whole career, I've always promoted positivity, mm -hmm. real father game. And the second some drama comes out, it overshadows it. Everybody shares the drama, but they never shared the situations when it was all positive. Okay, got you. Um, they always say there's three sides to every story, right. right? Your side, her side, and of course the truth. What do you think your role was in the demise of your marriage or your relationship? Um, I think I was just, you know, laser focused on, you know, the career and stuff like that. And a lot of things with my career would be problems in the marriage. Mm. Like when you say things in your career, what are you referencing? You know, Working with other females, things like that would be an issue. So you feel as if your wife, your, your ex, well, your soon to be ex-wife, mm -hmm. uh, was she jealous? Yeah, most definitely. Now I saw something else where you spoke on her, um, you spoke on her going through your phone on a regular yeah, basis. Most definitely. That's what you had to deal with regularly? Like, yeah. Now that how was, does that, that work? That was an everyday thing. Give like, me your phone, you walk in, what does that mean? I'm, if I'm asleep, she just went through the phone every night. You know mm. what I'm saying? So, and she says she never found anything. It'd just be Instagram messages pertaining to doing skits and stuff like that. It was okay. never anything. Okay. How did you, uh, how did you know that she had gone through your phone? She told me. <laughs> wow. <laughs> All right. Now, um, <laughs> did you ever have any reservations about sharing this drama that was taking place in your relationship being in such a public position? Nah, not really. I never, I never even spoke on it, man. I didn't even speak about certain things with close family. Mm. And then, you know, so once it hit the internet, that was the first time a lot of people even heard anything about it. Yeah. It's funny when you mentioned your family, how, how did your family react to her or respond to her? And I saw some things where she talked about her father and uh, you, I wasn't quite clear on what all that was. Did you have a good relationship with her father? Yeah, it was cool. It was actually cool. Okay. Yeah. And where, where did it fall apart? Because she seemed like she brought him into, um, from her perspective. It's just with the over the top dramatics and the line and stuff like that. That's when it kind of, it fell apart with us when I seen that he was cool with the lies and then he would back that no matter what. Mm. Cause me as a father, if my kid is doing something wrong, I'm not backing that. I'm okay. gonna make sure my kid is on the right path. So that's where we fell out at when I seen how he was moving. Gotcha. Um, you from North Carolina. Most uh, the home state of the baby. And mm -hmm. uh, I, I know that apparently he made a pass at your, you know, soon to be ex-wife as well. Uh, was that true? Um, what were the details, uh, uh, you know, surrounding that? And how did that make you feel? Now that one was crazy because when I first seen it, it did look real. You mm -hmm. know, I had reached out to the baby and his team and all that about doing a feature for my song, Drop It Low. Um, so when I seen the, the the messages, it was kind of crazy. We had a conversation, a heated argument over the phone about it. You and her? But then me and him. Me and oh, you and the baby had a Yeah, okay. we actually spoke on the phone about it. He said he didn't do it. You know what I'm saying? It was it was just the way he said it. It kind of seemed like mm -hmm. he was telling me I was being insecure over a message that I saw. So, I mean, I thought it was really a message from him. But when I seen it, when I, after it all played out, somebody said that that was all fake. What, what was... What was her response to all of that? She brought it straight to me because um, she's always showed me certain people that be in the DMs. And I always say, I'm not worried about that. I'm secure. You know what I'm saying? I know you ain't going to reply back to it, so it don't matter. Mm -hmm. But this particular one with the baby, she wanted to take it public. And I actually told her not to. I said, okay. you never went public with any, any of the other ones, so why this one? Mm -hmm. But she went public. She posted it. It was out of my control after that. Now, when it comes to being public, speaking of that, how do you feel? Do you feel like you have any regrets about making everything so public that was taking place in your life, in your relationship? Yeah, I do. Okay. If you could I do mean, it over again, you would as change? As far as drama, like I've never, I've never even posted any of that stuff. Mm -hmm. So it was always, it's always been positivity. But um, yeah, I regret a lot of the, some of the things I did though, for sure. Okay. What, is there anything specifically you would do differently next time? Um, I think I would rather keep my relationship more private. Understood. Um, you also mentioned that your social media account was compromised when you started going through your divorce. Right. Right. You went from almost 9 million followers down to what, two or three million? Yeah. Okay. Now, 
tell us about that. Do you feel like it was, you know, were you cyber hacked? It was Nah, I wasn't definitely wasn't hacked. Um it's it was three admins on the account, myself, um, my ex and somebody from her team, the um, brand manager or whatever. One of those people deleted the the actual account. I spoke to Facebook, they said it was deleted inside. You know, I know it wasn't myself. I would never delete a page of 8.9 million followers. So I, it's got to be out of the, <laughs> one of those admins. How did that impact your money? A lot. How much would you say you lost? Um, I'd say I definitely was at least a, close to a million a year off that one platform. And, In revenue? That dropped down and how much you would? That dropped down a lot. Wow. Um, the whole page is gone. I don't have that page no more at all, so. Had to make a new page. I'm at like a million on my new page. Okay, on Facebook. Mm. Wow. Uh, who's in your DMs? Any ladies? Yeah, it's a lot of people in the DMs. Famous? A few. Okay. Would you Would you get back into a high profile relationship, um, or a relationship with someone who had, you know, an equal or or more? Most definitely. Notoriety, you Most would. definitely. Like, if it's starting out and it's equal, then I feel like it makes sense. Okay. Gotcha. Did you grow up um, well off or, you know, did you come from humble beginnings? Humble what was beginnings, that like? for sure. Okay. Yeah. I come from a small town, so, you know, our family, we all, we, everybody struggles, so that's what I came from. So you're like the person in your family that's really kind of gone to that level. Yeah. yeah. So everybody aspires to kind of, you know, do what you're doing. Is that what you say? I think so. A lot of a lot of people are starting to jump in the lane of content creation as well. So okay, um, we spoke about North Carolina, but we didn't get specific. And I know you kind of told me off camera yeah. about you know being close to Charlotte, but where specifically did you grow up in Carolina? Forest City, North Carolina. Forest City. Yeah, forest, just like it sounds. Like okay. a lot of trees, man. It was country, all of that. Okay. What's the industry out there? Um, it's more like textile. They do a lot of warehouse work, stuff like that. Okay. Okay. Well, you know, at the Culture Club, we like to make sure that passport gets stamped, right? Mm -hmm. So with that said, um, this segment is called Truth and Taste, all right? So one thing on the Culture Club Uncensored, we want to make sure we break bread with our guests uh, during every episode, and we incorporate many different cultural foods. Some you may know, some you may not. Um, are you up for a mystery meal? Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Um, why don't you go ahead and, you know what I'm saying? Unravel that, man. Let's see what you got going on over here, man. And, and why you doing that? What's your hometown known for? Uh, what you mean? As far as food, culinary. If we, if we would go to Forest City, what would we experience? Definitely country cooking. Country cooking. You know what I'm saying? Give me a couple dishes. One dish that a lot of people are not familiar with is it's, it's called liver mush. Liver mush. And I found that out when I moved here to Georgia. I okay. was actually working. I, I was working at a warehouse at this time. Okay. Um, and I brought this dish up to a lot of people out there. Nobody had it. They never even heard of it. Yeah. I looked it up, man, and I, I heard Scrapple is in it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, liver mush. Well, um, we want to, you know, shout out our friends at... Ike's Cafe and Grill here uh, in Atlanta, Georgia, and they uh, specialize in West African cuisine. So I think that uh, maybe we need to just go ahead and explain what everything is, okay, right? cool, just so cool. we're, we're on the same page. Now, you're going right to it. Now, the oh, truth, what is that? that's, that's cow's foot. Oh, man, I ain't never had that. <laughs> yeah, that's cow's foot right there. Um, what else we got on here? We also got these snails. Okay, so I'm just making sure I said, since we spoke on liver mush, I feel like you might be open to some of whatever. Nah, I ain't, I'm not open to what. <laughs> yeah. Not no snails. No, no, you don't want the snails? Okay, I understand now. I mean, you know. Now, this is, know this is jollof. This is jollof rice. You ever had jollof rice? Nah. Okay, all right. I'm going to go for what I know on the rice. Oh, you're going to go for what you know on the rice. Um, of course, we got some plantains on there. Um, how that taste? The rice is good. Good. Yeah, man. All right. You know, you might be in Dutty December uh, in Ghana next year or Nigeria. Um, What's that, plantains? Yeah. 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 You eat plantain? Yeah, I know what that is. Okay. All right. 
because you went right for that hoof. I didn't know what was going on, <laughs> the truth. I thought maybe you might be inspired. Um, <laughs> when you go back home to visit, what's the, the one dish you got to have? There's some chicken wings from this spot called um, Drop In. Drop In. Anybody from Forest City, they know okay. that's going to be when you move out of, the, out of the city. Okay. Drop In Chicken. Okay. That's drop In Chicken. Not bad. Um, what's an unusual dish that was a must-have for you growing up um, that you consider uncommon in other places? Mm. I don't know. I mean, I probably would say I can't really think of nothing on that. Well, liver mush sounds like it might you think that? encapsulate. You got to try some liver mush, man. I man. promise you. Man. <laughs> I promise you, you try some liver mush, you're going to like that. Yeah? Well, how do they, how they prepare that? Fry it in a pan. Okay. Put a little cooking oil in the pan, mm-hmm. slice it up, and fry it. Okay. Wow. Um, it's a breakfast dish. Breakfast you know, dish. Get you some um, scrambled eggs with cheese. Okay. Okay. Get you some grits and some toast. It's going to be the best meal you ever had. Liver mush. Mm-hmm. I heard it was like 30% pig's liver in there. If you eat hooves... <laughs> I can promise you, you're going to be all right with that. <laughs> <laughs> See, I don't even need the hooks, man. And snails, I, I, you snails know, and right. all that stuff, man. <laughs> right. It's exotic, man. It's, it gets exotic around here. Um, this segment here, man, is Tap Out. Okay. All right? This is uh, where we have you really set the record straight on things that, you know, many people may speculate on, but they don't really know. All right? All right. So um, we're going to give you a minute to set the record straight. What are three things um, that you think you did wrong in your relationship to cause a split? Mm, to cause it. Like I said, the only thing I can think of is just working a lot. And, you know, career choice seemed like it might have been an issue. That's really the only thing. I feel like everything else was cool. Mm, okay. Um, what's the hardest thing you've had to deal with as a result of all of this? Um, I guess the opinions of people of how the relationship actually ended, um, uh, all the lies that was told, which have been debunked. I'm vindicated now, but you know, once a person gets an opinion about you or perception, they kind of stick with that stuff a lot of times. So mm. that's the hardest part of it for me. Do you think that, you know, people get a lot from say these clips? And I, I know one of the clips that kind of was circulating was where you said, I don't want to be a daddy or something like right. that. I mean, I know there might've been context to that Oh, Can you give okay. us the, you know, what was that conversation? Um, basically, I never planned, you know what I'm saying? Um, I have two beautiful daughters, but it was never a situation where I actually planned it. Like, okay, I'm ready to have a baby now. Mm. So um, in both of, both of my situations, they stopped taking birth control purposely. And did they tell you? After, after they was pregnant, they said they did it purposely. They, because at the time, I'm saying I wasn't ready to have a kid yet. Mm. So in that context of that argument, you know, I'm raising kids that are not my kids, giving them my all, treating them like as if they're my actual biological kids. And to get called a deadbeat in the argument, it will make you get mad and say something like what I said. That's why I said it. Okay. So yeah. basically, her calling you a deadbeat dad and you saying, I never wanted to be a dad. Never wanted to be a dad. That's the only reason why I said it. Okay. All right. Um, what do you want our viewers to know that? they may have had misconstrued. They may mis- be misunderstanding. Just like I asked you that question about you saying you never wanted to be a dad. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm sure there are other things that have gone on. Um, what would you want people to know? Um, I guess as far as arguments, we all say things out of anger. Mm-hmm. Um, but I've never intentionally hurt anybody. Um, I love my kids to death. And being a father is like one of the best things that's ever happened to me after becoming a father so yeah what's the relationship like with your kids now and obviously they're impacted they see everything Mm -hmm. they're watching social media i'm sure their friends are speaking on it because you guys have a very high level of profile Mm -hmm. what um what's that like with them uh relationship with my kids is good man you know every moment i've ever spent with my kids have been beautiful moments so you know they know they know who i am in real life so Mm. None of that social media stuff can't even do nothing to that. Okay. What, um, what's the relationship like with her children? Do you still have a relationship with them? When I see them. You okay. know, when I go to pick up my little girl, I see them. We definitely speak, stuff like that. Okay. Got you. How, how, 
in this well this this opportunity right here is for you to you know really clear the air how do you think you've grown from all of these experiences that you've had um i would just say just managing keeping composure no matter what the situation is mm -hmm. you know you should never even have to speak in those in the way that some people heard me speak in some of those audios should never even happen no matter what if you're angry or not just walk away from that situation yeah Definitely, I saw the uh, the clip where she was on with what nine one one, and you know, she said you had a gun or something mm -hmm. like that. Right. What was that like? I mean, just across the board. Obviously, we know what we saw, mm -hmm. but just overall, because it seemed to be pretty triggering. To you know, and I heard you saying, you know, I guess you're on speaker I don't have a gun right and all of that I mean what did you feel when she was making those accusations in front of you you know betrayed you know I felt like she didn't want me to exist anymore or something because mm -hmm. I mean if the cops would have believed that they could have came in and did anything to me so you know they checked the house they know it was no guns in the house or none of that so you know just yeah. it was betrayal so after a moment like that that you and her have Tell me this, what, what were you listening to probably leading up to that moment? Not like right before, but you know, or what did you listen to right after? I can't even say that I listened to music after that, man. Mm. It, was a, it was a really tough moment. Okay, you did know? you know it was over then? Yeah, yeah, I knew it was over and um, I had said it because that, that video right there, that particular video, that has happened and I chose to make it work, so. At, at that moment, I knew that was it, especially after going through cancer. Because, like, going through cancer, I seen stuff a lot different. Mm. That battle was something different, so it made me realize how important I am, you know, for my kids and all of that. And I said, I can't, I can't go through this type of stuff no more. So mm. I knew it was over with. That was it. So that night, you guys go to separate rooms at that point? Is the conversation, is the house quiet? What's the vibe? Nah, that, that, that night is the introduction of... This divorce is serious. This happening now. I'm going to file. You know, I'm moving into a. We gonna go separate ways. Separated. We separated right after that. Okay. So you had that discussion that night. Mm -hmm. Wow. Um, I had that discussion immediately after the conversation when the police left and everything. And what did she say? What was her response? She didn't want that. So she didn't want to get divorced after no. that 911 call. Mm -hmm. Hmm. So leading up to what we saw online, um, were you physical with her? Had you put your hands on her? Nah, nah. I've never put my hands on a woman in my entire life. Okay, wow. So she just ran with the narrative. Ran with the narrative. Once I hit the internet, it was like almost as, she actually did come back and make a statement and said that I never put my hands on her. Mm. And she only brought up the finger where she was talking about the whole tote situation. That was it. She actually fixed it, but then turned around after that and went back and started back saying the same thing again. Wow, man. Um, That's, but it's a lot of money being made on social media with those type of lies, though. Yeah. So you saw the recent, um, with the other influencer, I guess she did the 50-part series uh, talking about her ex-husband and whatnot. So obviously, you know, these are negative situations that mm -hmm. gain a lot of traction. Yeah. Is that what you're talking about when you say these types of things are making a lot of money? Yeah, it's a game for women. When women say these things on the internet, it's a game for them. Mm -hmm. It's not a game for the guys, obviously. You know, it, it can destroy our whole careers and reputations behind that. It is, uh, once you kind of get that, that rap on you, it is different. Yeah. Um, how do you think people responded to you, you know, as you would move you know, through your day to day when they would see you knowing how public all of this had been? In real life, it was, it's good. It's flowers, you know, but on social media, it looks like something totally different. I, I've heard you publicly speak on being abused as a man. Um, how would you describe that type of abuse? Is it physical abuse? Is it emotional abuse? Uh, how would you define it from your vantage point? I'd say from all levels, it's, it's, it's the same, you know, but we don't really see it as that as men. You know, we're taught to, turn the other cheek when it comes to that type of stuff, especially when it's a woman. Um, and some, so would, some of us see it as love when a woman is acting like that, mm -hmm. over thinking that you cheating or something like that. Some of us see it as love if that's what we've seen coming up. Yeah. 
Yeah. So she put her hands on you. She has. But the videos are out there. You know, that's it's nothing that I would I would have never brought it to social media, but the videos was out there. So they could see that. Mm-hmm. Her physically like smacking me in the head, knocking my hat off, stuff like that. Mm. Do you think was that her experience? Did you learn about those aspects of her in the past, you know, as you all began to date and then got married or did you just experience it firsthand? I just had to experience it firsthand because her first relationship, when it ended, the same accusations came out about him. And I wasn't aware of that until our situation blew up. So then there's a video pop up where she's saying more worse stuff about that guy. So it's like, I don't know, if, I don't even know if that stuff is true. Cause I know with me it wasn't true. So I can't really speak for what's going on in that situation. He never reached out to you or you never had a discussion with him, did you? We spoke. We actually had a conversation. I How asked him it? about it and I said, did you do those things? She said you did. And he was like, he don't speak on that because of his religion. He says, whatever it was that was in his past, they don't speak about it. And I felt I felt like that was kind of weird to me because if I didn't do something, I don't care what religion I'm in, I'm going to say I didn't do that. Mm-hmm. So. I think you made mention of, you know, men feeling like that's love. I think a lot of women feel like that's love too. So yeah. they're used to, you know, certain types of um, relationships that have abuse and toxicity, you know. I've met Ooh. some too since that. You said you've I, met I've some met women? some since this went okay. to the internet, you know. A young lady was telling me about a past relationship mm. and she was actually calling it love. This guy was actually abusive to her from what she was telling me. And I was telling her, I said, nah, that's not love at all. You know, if a man putting his hands on you, that's not love. Mm-hmm. And she broke down crying. So I do realize it's a lot of women who do think that's love. Mm-hmm. And she might have brought that to me because of what she heard on the Internet. And I don't approve of that at all. So yeah, a man should never have, never put his hands on a woman. Agreed. Definitely. Um, now that you are on your way to being single, what do you say if you come across a woman who says I'm toxic? Because I know a lot of people love to label themselves that way. What are you going to do? I'm running the other way. Mm. Toxicity is something I don't want to be around at all. So gotcha. I'm allergic to it. <laughs> Understood. <Yeah>. Um, <laughs> now, of course, you know, knowing you as a, a successful social media influencer, uh, what are the first five things you need to become a social media influencer? What type of advice would you give? Um, you definitely got to have thick skin. Um, got to work really hard be creative um, you know pay attention to, to what's coming out new and adapt to, to what's coming out as well okay. how many was that four or five uh, I feel like that was four that was four. One more. let me see um, invest in yourself you know what I'm saying most definitely get that promo from people who are already in that position to get more eyes on your content okay would you do it in a relationship setting again It's possible, but it just, I mean, a lot of NDAs and stuff would have to be signed this time, you know, so, mm. so nobody can't be doing all that lying stuff. Can't do that. Uh, what trade secrets or advice do you have for those seeking success as a social media influencer and for ma- maintaining that? You just got to choose, you know what I'm saying? You got to know exactly what it is that you looking to gain from it, you know, know exactly what you're trying to do. And consistency is always going to be key with everything. Stay consistent with it. And that's pretty much it. Connect with the right people that can help you get there. Your first, um, your first experience with the fame that you got on social media, you know, what was that like? Was it comp meals at the restaurant? <laughs> was it VIP tickets to this concert, backstage passes? What was that like? What was that first experience like? Man, it was a lot of skipping the line and stuff like that. Cause I'm well, still, they like in the front, like, hey, Latru, come here. Yeah, get up here, man. You, okay. What you doing? Like, I'm standing in the back of the line as normal. I'm used to going to the clubs and stuff. So when I realized that it got as big as it had, it was like after I put out my series called Will He Cheat? And that's been like seven years ago when I put that out. It did probably 50 million views on all platforms. Mm-hmm. And I was still going to clubs, and that's when I realized that I was bigger than what I thought you know, from social media, so. Wow, now, speaking on that uh, series, Will He Cheat, Mm -hmm. I know you wrote a book too. Yeah. Tell us about the name of that book, because the name was interesting. The name of the book is How to Consistently Be Great in Bed. So, yeah, I mean, you know, the truth, we can't just 
run past that like it's nothing. <laughs> let's, let's really, let's unpack that just a little bit. We ain't got a whole lot of time, but we got to give the people some right. of that. T talk to us about the, uh, give us the cliff notes on that book there um, and why people need to buy it. Well, men it's, and it's women? definitely for men and women. Okay. And I've ex some of my experiences, you know, y'all just got to be careful. Get the book, check it out. But if that relationship don't work. Okay. It, now, it when you. It might be some, some, some lies told about you because they're still trying to get you back. That's really kind of how I can put it, man. Okay. Now, and I got to ask you this. When you're consistently great in the bedroom, does that ever bring the toxicity out of some of the women? Like, when you, when you give them that greatness yeah, yeah. as a man. Yeah, most definitely. I think every man and every woman has experienced it from both sides. Y'all know what it's like. So okay. With the book, but it definitely gave you techniques and... It ain't about the size of the ship, none of that stuff. For the fellas that's concerned about that, it's gonna it's gonna help you get right, and your all woman right. gonna still get the orgasm. And it ain't all about the man making the woman get the orgasm either. She gotta be mentally where she need to be too. So, okay. Listen, people. He said techniques. Okay, <laughs> techniques. <laughs> we'll, we'll unpack that next time. Um, but as we get ready to close things out, man. Um, how has music been a driving force in your life? Uh, music has got me through so much. So, you know, going through tough situations. Uh, so I, music is definitely a go-to for me. Mm. Okay. Even, even creating music as well. So, you know, singing and all of that. And me doing R&B has, has helped me out a lot in the past few years. I just finally put out my first R&B song, which was Drop It Low. Okay. And it's good over 100 million streams. So, Congratulations. Appreciate it. Definitely. Um, last question for you. You know, we, we need to help some folks out when it comes to being consistently great in the bedroom. Give us four songs for that playlist they need. Um, you definitely need Drop It Low. Um, Got to go pick out your favorite, whatever your favorite R. Kelly song is. Y'all know he's responsible for a lot of babies being made. Let me see. Leg shaking is one of them. Wait, who? Who's that? R. Kelly made that song. <laughs> okay. Leg shaking. R. Kelly got um, okay. Featuring Ludacris. Um, let me see. When I get home is another one. That's another song by me. You know okay. what I'm saying? I gotta put that put that placement in there. Who else? I don't know. Just pick one of those baby making songs, man. You know, I can't tell y'all what songs to pick, but y'all know what's going on. Okay. Hey, man. The truth. Uh, we appreciate you, man, coming appreciate through the Culture Club Uncensored.